Building your own bike trailer is fun, but it can be a challenging project. One of the advantages of fabricating your own trailer is that you can build the trailer as robust as you like, as well as design it to suit your needs. This trailer was made so that I can carry several hundred pounds if I wanted to. I can shop for food, take the dog on a long day trip, and carry my camera gear. There are potential cost savings with building a project like this as well. That is, of course, if you have access to some basic tools that you will need for fabrication. When starting this project, look around on the internet and see what other people have done. Chances are you will always have to modify what they did somewhat in order to meet the needs and the limitations of the materials that you have access to. Scrounge around for second-hand materials like wood and electrical metal conduit tubing that can be used to help construct the trailer frame. Small bike wheels that come off of a used toddler's bike will perform well as trailer wheels. My bike is old, so it does not have much in the way of brazed on threaded attachment sites on the frame. New bikes offer more options for this, which will likely make your job much easier. I needed to fabricate a metal plate so that I could attach the hitch to the bike frame. I used a piece of paper for which I traced the design of the bike frame out onto it and transferred those lines to a thin piece of cardboard. I then cut that shape out. After I had checked the fitting of the cardboard to the bike frame and I was satisfied with the fit, I transferred those lines to a piece of aluminum plate. I then cut it out and checked for the final fitting. The trailer hitch solution that you choose to use should have free rotational movement along three different axes. This will reduce the binding and the stress on your bike frame. An inexpensive solution I used for a trailer hitch was a cabinet coaster wheel, an item that you can find at any hardware store. I cut the wheel bisecting this on two parallel planes which then allowed the caster wheel to easily be attached to the mounting plate via two bolts. The caster wheel shown here has only two axes of rotation. I have yaw so far and I have pitch. The third axis of rotation we need here is roll and we get that by fitting a piece of PVC pipe to the caster wheel mounting plate via two U-bolts. My trailer arm will rotate freely inside of the PVC pipe giving me the side to side roll movement that I need for traveling over sloping terrain. I found out that my quick release hub was rubbing on the trailer hitch, so I picked up an old Teflon cutting board at a second hand store and I cut it to the shape that I needed to raise the hitch away from the quick release hub. For the trailer itself, you can design a flatbed, build a box, or perhaps use a dog kennel from the second hand store. I chose to mount the kennel onto a thick sheet of plywood so that I would have a container for putting items into and still have a solid platform for the trailer bed. The roof of this doghouse also makes a feasible rain cover. Drawing the design plans out on paper takes time, but it also helps to discover problems that you have not addressed yet. It also helps with calculating the number of fixtures you will need to complete your project. The width of your trailer will have to include the width of both wheel axles, the mounting plates for the wheel axles, the tubing thickness, and any box dimensions you plan to place between the wheels. Now this sounds pretty basic, but it will be critical that you're able to bend your EMT pipe to meet these precise measurements. I am using electrical conduit to construct a frame that will hold the wheels and serve as a trailer arm. You don't have to use a plywood base if you are good at bending the pipe and you intend to attach the tubing directly to a solid structure like a box. I wanted to be able to support lots of weight so I'm choosing to attach the plywood to the electrical tubing for added stability. I worked out on paper the shape and degree of bends that the pipe was going to need for the trailer arm. I scaled down a model on paper of the trailer and its trailer arm so that I could see visually and adjust if necessary the amount of turn I would get with the trailer in relation to the back wheel of the bike as a result of using different bent pipe configurations of the trailer arm. 
The most challenging part of this project is the bending of the EMT pipe. Bending pipe on a flat plane is not hard, but if you have to bend pipe in three dimensions, it might take you more than one try. We are looking at two electrical box cover plates that have been bent around the electrical conduit. They will be bolted in place. These are going to be used to support the trailer wheel axles. Be sure to get these plates and the holes you drill for the wheel axles aligned in parallel and perpendicular to the trailer frame. This will ensure that your trailer tracks behind your bike properly. Stainless steel bolts are used to fasten the pipe to itself or to the plywood base. You can use Teflon locking nuts or a dab of silica glue to keep the bolts from vibrating loose. Okay, here's the final and the hitch. Um, this swivels like that, swivels like this, and it turns like this. Set up with a quick release, but it's really a two-handed affair, not just a one-handed thing. Uh, hard to do this with one hand. Alright, so that goes in. Set in the Teflon bushing, the metal bushing, the locking pin. I can't do this with just one I'm wasting video time, critical video time. Okay, so there it is anyway. This pin pulls out and allows you to set that up. Okay, the Bowmobile is pretty much done. I got the tires inflated. I got some reflector tape on the underside from cars from a far distance. I got reflectors in the back. We got a load shifting protection board. I can pull it out, set it up so that I can take different size loads with me and Bo can still come along and not get freaked out because something's falling on him. We got the leash in the front and he's ready to go. Much of the ideas used here in constructing this trailer were found on the internet. The more you look around and see what other people did, the more you'll be able to build one that's tailored to your needs. At this point of being over a year old, I'd have to say that this trailer is a great performer. If you're going to introduce your dog to trailer riding, be sure to take their training slow and be careful. Bo loves it, but riding in a trailer isn't something that comes real natural to them. Hope this video helps and gives you some good ideas of building your own trailer. And we'll see you out there.